Church's Facebook page and heard each Sunday on a KVFD 1400 at 8.30 a.m. Welcome to this celebration of the Mass of the Feast of the Transfiguration of the Lord. The opening hymn will be hymn number 604, Praise to the Lord, hymn number 604. Please rise. Good morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins so to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal a contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You're seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O God, who in the glorious transfiguration of your only begotten Son confirmed the mysteries of faith by the witness of the fathers and wonderfully prefigured our full adoption to sonship, grant, we pray, to your servants that listening to the voice of your beloved Son, we may merit to become co-heirs with him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. As I watched, thrones were set up, and the Ancient One took his throne. His clothing was snow bright, and the hair on his head was as white as wool. His throne was flames of fire with wheels of burning fire. A surging stream of fire flowed out from where he sat. Thousands upon thousands were ministering to him and myriads upon myriads attended him. The court was convened and the books were opened. As the visions during the night continued, I saw one like a son of man coming on the clouds of heaven. When he reached the ancient one and was presented before him, the one like a son of man received dominion, glory, and kingship. All peoples, nations, and languages serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not be taken away. His kingship shall not be destroyed. The word of the Lord. Exalted far above all gods. 
reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Beloved, we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we had been eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received honor and glory from God the Father when that unique declaration came to him from the majestic glory. This is my son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. Moreover, we possess the prophetic message that is altogether reliable. You will do well to be attentive to it as to a lamp shining in a dark place until day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. The word of the Lord. reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus took Peter, James, and his brother John and led them up to a high mountain by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, conversing with him. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud cast a shadow over them. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell prostrate and were very much afraid. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise and do not be afraid. And when the disciples raised their eyes, they saw no one else but Jesus alone. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, Do not tell the vision to anyone until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Now the setting for the Transfiguration is like no other. The awe-inspiring mountaintop of Mount Tabor was high enough for everyone to see. The Transfiguration of Christ happened at night, so it makes perfect sense that in the fullness of the darkness of night an astounding brilliance shone forth from the Transfigured Christ. Now in Christian teachings the Transfiguration is a pivotal moment and the setting on the mountain is presented as the point where human nature meets God, the meeting place of the temporal and the eternal, with Jesus himself as the connecting point, acting as a bridge between heaven and earth. Now on Mount Tabor, Jesus felt himself comforted, reassured, and strengthened for the ordeal ahead. Nothing has changed. He will still have to face a dark and threatening future. But he knew that somehow it is what God wanted for him and that God would give him the strength to face it. Now the chief, chief significance of the Tabor experience was the confirmation that Jesus was truly God's son. He had full and final authority. 
It was also to reveal the cornerstones of our faith. Moses represented the law, and Elijah represented the prophets. But Christ fulfills both the law and the prophets. The Transfiguration also echoes the teaching by Jesus that God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. Although Moses had died and Elijah had been taken up to heaven centuries before, they now live in the presence of the Son of God, implying that the same return to life applies to all who face death and have faith. He is a true cornerstone. His word is truth. Christ's words are truth, and we see him once again in prayer to the Father. It was his relationship with the Father that sustained him throughout his life. It is clear that the wonder of the transfiguration resonated with Peter and illuminated his life. Many years later, as we read in the second reading, he saw was eyewitnesses to the glory on the mountain. A voice came to him saying, This is my beloved Son, who I am well pleased. Now the hour of light experienced during the transfiguration was also meant to help Peter and the other disciples face the hours of darkness that would soon come to them. The disciples were given strength that day, for they were to come another day and another hill. This time the sky would be dark and the face of Jesus would not be covered with light, but with sweat and blood. There would be no voices from heaven, but only those of scoffers and mockers. The disciples would be scattered and their faith would be tested. Peter also wanted to stay on the mountaintop not only to hold on to the blessedness of the experience, but to avoid reality and the problems of everyday life. But that was not what God wanted. Jesus summoned them to go back down the mountain and to face their problems and their ministries. The experience was not meant to provide an escape from their struggle that existed, but to provide a time of retreat, a time to rest, renew, and regain for the ministries that lay ahead of them. We all eventually have to come down from the mountain and return to the valley where the life goes on in the darkness of faith. True religion does not encourage escape from life, but it helps us to commit ourselves more deeply to it. Now the church reminds us of the best way to prepare for any adversity we may face is to deepen our prayer life with Christ, but also in accepting any of the ministries that lay before each and every one of us. It is in the finding the courage and strength to say yes to our ministries and move forward in faith. It is the willingness to follow the one who went before us. We profess our faith. I believe, believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us, for us men for our salvation, salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. 
he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord calls us to imitate his love and holiness. With trust in God's goodness, let us offer our prayers this day. For the Holy Father, the Vicar of Christ, may God continue to bless him with wisdom and strength in leading the church. Let us pray to the Lord. For leaders of the nations, may God reveal his power, inspiring them in humble service to him and to the people in their care. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who wrestle with doubt, may the Father reveal the love of Christ and draw them home. Let us pray to the Lord. For all of us gathered here, may God in his kindness enable us to hear and obey his voice. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those who have died, especially Anne Marino, David McCauley, Jim Waffle, Rowena Halligan, may they enjoy eternal life in heaven and behold the face of God. And for the intentions of this Mass, Bob Derrig, Shirley and Joe Martin, Lee Ann Gillespie, Tom Harrison, Mark Harrison, and deceased members of the Harrison family, let us pray to the Lord. For the prayers we all hold silently in our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. God, our Father, we beg you for an increase in religious vocations. Help our people offer their lives in service to you. Let them hear your Spirit's invitation and awaken in their hearts the desire to respond with courage, generosity, and joy. Raise up from our families faithful leaders who will serve as deacons, priests, and consecrated religious. As we entrust your care, all who seek to do your will, we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The hymn of preparation will be hymn number 881, How Good Lord to Be Here. Hymn number 881.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sanctify, O Lord, we pray, these offerings here made to celebrate the glorious transfiguration of your only begotten Son, and by his radiant splendor, cleanse us from the stains of sin through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, O Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he received his glory in the presence of chosen witnesses and filled with the greatest splendor that bodily form which he shares with all humanity, that the scandal of the cross might be removed from the hearts of his disciples and that he might show how in the body of the whole church is to be fulfilled what so wonderfully shone forth first in its head. And so, the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Walker, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. 
welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. <clears throat> Amen. 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 At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us to Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
will be hymn number 880, Transform Us, hymn number 880.
Let us pray. <clears throat> May the heavenly nourishment we have received, O Lord, we pray, transform us into the likeness of your Son, whose radiant splendor you will to make manifest in his glorious transfiguration, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Again, now that we've received the precious body and blood of our Lord, our, we are driven to, well, thanksgiving for this great gift. And so it becomes a question of how it is that it is that we give back to our loving Father. How do we live out our gratitude? And again, over the next few months, as you've noticed through our messaging, we will be discussing our stewardship. And throughout the week, please consider prayerfully how you can take the next step in your own prayer life. Next week, we will have the opportunity to commit to praying and growing in our relationship with the Lord. And again, so there, you'll notice there's more signage and things in the narthex and at the east entrance of the church regarding our stewardship appeal. Um, tomorrow, Monday evening, they'll have another grounds cleanup, and this time it's around St. Edmund School. Please bring your rake and gloves and meet at the school front parking lot at 5.30 p.m. Curious Catholics will be held this Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. at Shiny Top. Everyone 20 year, 21 years and older are invited. And Brother Ross will be exploring our faith and answering your questions. Also, today the Knights of Columbus will be at the exits of the church, passing out their Tootsie Rolls and collecting donations. Again, all the donations go to those with special needs. And again, yesterday we were privileged to have the ordination of four deacons here in the Diocese of Sioux City. Two of those new, newly ordained deacons Deacon Jeff Stonick and Deacon Mark Steinberg, of course, were ordained for service here at Holy Trinity Parish. So we're grateful. It was a lovely ceremony, lovely liturgy. But again, we're grateful to have them here. And next week, the uh, two new deacons, one will be preaching 7.30 Mass in the morning, and the other will be preaching at 10. But between the Masses, we'll have a reception for the both of the newly ordained deacons. And of course, as I mentioned last night, we're very grateful for our old deacons as well um, and old priests, you know. <laughs> so anyway, again, if you see either Jeff or Mark, be mindful that they were just ordained yesterday and please congratulate them. The Lord be with you. With the and Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mass is ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord with your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The closing hymn will be hymn number 526, Sing with all the saints in glory, hymn number 526.